Hi everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, July 26. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now, following last week's news update, which of course focused on the state budget and the very positive news for retirees that are contained within the budget. And if you recall, there are several key provisions um, contained in the outside sections of the budget that would relate directly to public retirees. Everything from the Special Commission on the COLA to the increase in the state life insurance benefit for state retirees and active employees, the creation of a special task force on post-retirement um, work, those are things right now, in addition to other items that are on Governor Maura Healy's desk, she has until Monday to sign the budget. Um, she may choose to act on the budget prior to Monday, but Monday, this coming Monday, is the deadline. And of course, the legislative session for the current 2023-2024 legislative calendar comes to an end, or at least a formal end, on July 31st, which is this coming Wednesday. Now, following last week's message, we heard from a number of members who had questions and concerns, and there was some confusion around the impact of those measures that are contained in the budget on municipal retirees as well as retired teachers in some circumstances. And I want to apologize up front for any confusion that the message may have, have left you with. Um, if there's any kind of ambiguity in terms of how these different um, proposals would impact you um, as a municipal retiree versus someone who's retired from the state or a retired teacher. And I also want to indicate or, or at least thank those of you who took the time to reach out to ask these questions, in some cases to complain that you felt like you were being left out. And the reason why I want to thank you is that unless we hear from our members, we don't necessarily know um, just how these messages are being received. And it served as a reminder that we always need to explain the details of what's going on and explain just how these different measures um, will impact you as a retired public employee. Now, before I get into the details, let me say first and foremost that every single one of you is of equal importance to this association. Whether you are a retired teacher, retired state employee, retired municipal worker, retired from one of the authorities, under mass retirees, all of our members are of equal importance. Everybody is treated the same. It makes no difference where you are retired from, what your former position may or may not have been. Um, and as Ralph White always used to point out, and, and Ralph, this was very important to Ralph, it did not matter if someone was the former governor or a former highway department employee or the school custodian or the school superintendent or anything in between, everybody under our association is the same. And he always pointed out that we don't use titles. Once you're retired, you're retired. And as the saying goes, when you're out, you're out. And when you're out and you're part of mass retirees, all retirees are in this together and you're all of equal importance in terms of our advocacy, our service, our approach. It doesn't really matter where you're from. So that being said, let me address some of the things in the budget and also address why there is some confusion as to what might apply to retirees who are retired from one entity versus another. Now, as you've heard us talk about, there are 104 different public retirement systems spread across Massachusetts. One of them is a state retirement system. Another one is the teacher's retirement system, where all public school teachers, with the exception of City of Boston teachers, who are members of the Boston retirement system, and that provides further confusion, but all public school teachers, for the most part, are part of the Mass Teachers Retirement System. So those are the two retirement systems that are run by and paid for by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts directly, and the funding for those systems comes through the state budget and benefits that are established, particularly the COLA base, and I'll get into a little bit deeper into that in a moment, are established by the state for those two systems. But at the same time, we have 102 local retirement systems spread throughout the Commonwealth. Now we have one retirement law in Massachusetts that applies to all public retirees, and that's chapter 32. 
That's essentially the Bible when it comes to public retirement here in Massachusetts. And to some degree, under Chapter 32, there are uniform benefits. For instance, retirement age, how the retirement benefits are calculated. That is all determined by state law, by the statute. But individual salary levels for active employees, of course, are set by local communities, as they should be. There is no one size fits all. The same applies to something like the COLA base. Now, up until from 1981 through 1997, the state itself established, paid for, administered COLA benefits for all public retirees. That came about right after Proposition Two and a Half was passed. That responsibility was returned to the cities and towns back in 1997 through the COLA Reform Act that our association was directly involved in. It had gotten to the point where the state could no longer afford to foot the bill for local communities and local retirement systems had become much better funded, so the time was right to return that responsibility. And in doing so, a, a subsequent law that we helped get passed allows cities and towns to set their own COLA base. And there's a two-step process to that. One being the support and the vote of the five-member local retirement system. But in conjunction with action of the retirement system, the local municipal government, the local legislative body as it's referred to, also must vote to increase the COLA base. And the starting point back in 1997 and 1998 when these local laws were adopted and we crisscrossed the state back then and I was a young member of our team and Ralph White and Bill Reary and Bill Hill and other um, folks that were working with us at that time spent the better part of a year or so crisscrossing Massachusetts, making sure that every local community adopted what was known as Chapter 17, the COLA Reform Law. And we successfully got it adopted across all 102 systems. And for the most part, that law has now been very successful over the past quarter of a century. Not universally um, successful. We still have some systems that have lagged behind. But as you'll see in today's report, just this past year for FY25, we have 20 retirement systems who have voted, along with their local legislative body, to increase the COLA base. And these systems, the vast majority of systems across Massachusetts, have done a very good job of periodically increasing the COLA base and sharing the investment success, the success of the investment returns, that the money belongs to retirees, it's your money. Those trust funds were set up for you. And these local systems have done right by their local members and continually, periodically, and incrementally increase the COLA base. Now, the average across the state is a little bit over 16000 maybe approaching over the next year $17,000 on average. Now, during that same period of time, unfortunately, the COLA base for state retirees and retired teachers under the Mass Teachers Retirement System has continued to lag behind and we have been now stuck at the state and teacher level with a COLA base of just $13,000 for the past 12 years. The primary focus of the creation of the Special COLA Commission is to increase, to find a way forward to increase the state and teacher COLA base. However, at the same time, the Special Commission is also charged with the creation of a in what we call either an enhanced or a senior cola. The enhanced or senior cola is focused on long-term retirees, so in other words, someone who's been retired for 15 or more years, to create an additional cola benefit to help those retirees catch up or, or better contend with the forces of inflation, which in today's day and age is more important than any time in the last 40 years. Further, the COLA Commission will likely come up with some recommendations on how pension funding schedules might be able to be modified or changed in some way to either adopt a, a better COLA benefit or make other changes going forward that, that might make for a more stable, more sustainable funding schedule going forward into the future. So these types of recommendations that will come out of the COLA Commission they will then go before the legislature for a vote 
um, which changes could also be made through the legislative process, but whatever comes out of all of this at the end of the day will most certainly be local option for city and towns to adopt, 102 local retirement systems to adopt, and that will very quickly become local policy as well. So this is not an either or situation. No one's gonna be left behind, but because of our system of government here in Massachusetts, which has a very long standing local option and home rule tradition going all the way back to colonial times and continues to this very day and was strengthened as a matter of fact because of Proposition 2.5 and, and the unfunded mandate prohibitions that are contained in Prop 2.5 are still held to be sacrosanct even today by voters as well as elected officials. Those laws are not gonna be repealed, they're not gonna change, there will be no unfunded mandates. And the reason why I'm directly addressing that is that's a question that we've received over the past week and we've heard it um, over the years. Why do these things have to be local option? Can't the state just mandate it? I wish that were true. I wish that we could just get something passed through the legislature and signed into law by the governor that would be uniform policy across the state. Unfortunately, our system of government and the laws here in Massachusetts just don't allow for that to happen. So we are stuck with the current system. However, we will continue to do what we have always done over the past 56 years that Mass Retirees has been in existence. We're not gonna leave anyone behind. So if there are laws that are created at the state level that have to be adopted locally, we're gonna work with our local members. We're gonna work with the local retirement boards to see the job get done and see these policies and these laws implemented at the local level. Another item that's contained in the state budget is the increase in the basic life insurance benefit for state retirees and active state employees. Now, because the state controls and funds the health care benefits, including life insurance benefits for all state retirees as well as active state employees, those benefits are set within the statute. The only way to increase the life insurance benefit is to change state law in order to do so. Now at the local level, cities and towns already have the legal authority to increase these benefits in terms of life insurance to any level that they see fit. And as we have noted in the past, to give two examples, um, the town of Barnstable and the town of Braintree, well over a decade ago, both increased their basic life insurance benefit to $10,000. So those two communities are examples of municipalities that are ahead of the curve. Unfortunately, a number of cities and towns, just like the state, have lagged behind when it comes to life insurance benefits, particularly for retirees. Active employees and younger retirees often have access to optional life insurance benefits, but unfortunately those optional policies serve more as a term life insurance benefit that becomes increasingly unaffordable as someone ages. And for retirees, once you get above the age of 70 or 75, optional life insurance benefits <clears throat> are often just too expensive for you to continue on. <clears throat> that leaves just the basic life insurance benefit as really the only avenue for an end of life benefit that's gonna pay for burial expenses, for instance. So while cities and towns have the ability already to increase the benefit, we believe that the state finally coming through and pushing the benefit up to $10,000 will serve as the catalyst and leading by example that will cause uh, municipal governments to do the same thing. And we're gonna continue to work with our local members. We've had a number of local public employee committees already reaching out to our association for some details on this and looking for some support um, to get the job done at the local level, which is exactly what we're gonna continue to do. Now, speaking of local health insurance, we continue to work very closely, again, with the public employee committees whom have a retiree representative on the local PEC. By state law, our association appoints that retiree to the PEC. Um, they are a direct representative of our local retirees in those communities. And in addition to our PECs, we also work very closely with our friends at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Massachusetts. Not only do Nancy, Frank, and I serve on the Blue Cross Labor Advisory Committee, we're also working hand-in-hand -hand with Blue Cross to 
make sure that local retirees have the highest quality and most affordable health care benefits available. To that end, we are coordinating with Blue Cross and with our friends from the, from the active public employee unions to put together the second annual um, Municipal Health Insurance Summit, which is being hosted by Blue Cross and being facilitated by Blue Cross. It will be held on October 2nd at the Blue Cross offices down in Hingham. All of our PEC members, as well as the Inf Insurance Advisory Committee members, are invited and encouraged to attend. Now this meeting is not open to anyone um, other than those individuals serving in that capacity. And if you would like to volunteer to serve on a local PEC, please reach out. Um, we are always looking for volunteers at the local level to fill um, these positions when, they're, when, they're, when there happen to be openings. But if you are a local PEC member or an Insurance Advisory Committee member, Please contact Nancy McGovern to RSVP for the October 2nd summit. Um, space is going to fill up quick. Um, it's pretty limited in terms of how many people Blue Cross is going to be able to accommodate, maybe 80 to 100 individuals. Um, but last year's summit was very productive. I think those who attended got a lot out of it. And as we have been reporting, we are growing increasingly concerned at the local level that due to some constraints on municipal finances, that city and towns in some cases are once again looking at public retiree benefits as a source of savings, which is not a road we want to go down. And we need to get out in front of these issues, be prepared, and fight the fight before it really even begins in order to protect the rights of our, of our municipal retirees. Now, in terms of the budget itself, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's on Governor Healy's desk. She has until Monday to sign it. We are cautiously optimistic that we have the governor's support, not just for the COLA Commission, which she initiated in her budget back in January, but also for the basic life insurance benefit, the post-retirement work task force, and the levels of funding to fully fund the GIC and fully fund the Commonwealth's obligation to the public pension systems, um, we believe the governor will support, does support those items, but until she actually signs it and the pen hits the paper, um, you can never be overly confident with these things. As soon as we get news on these items, we will report them to you on our Facebook page, on MassRetirees.com. And by the way, if you're following us on Facebook or if you're watching this video on Facebook, please like the video, follow our page. That way you make sure that you're getting this information as soon as it becomes available. Now, one final point. We continually, every week, particularly on Facebook, are asked, what about the WEP? What about the GPO? And of course, what I'm referring to are the Social Security windfall elimination provision and government pension offset. The latest information on both of these issues is contained in the July newsletter, which all of you have received. You can also find any um, archived information on Weapon GPO and our national efforts to end both of these laws on our website, MassRetirees.com. At this time, there is no new news for us to report to you. We are aware of activities going on behind the scenes um, at the national level. Um, in Congress, there continues to be work on these issues from both sides of the aisle, but there is nothing tangible for us to report. Um, there are no scheduled upcoming hearings um, beyond what has already taken place during the current congressional session. As soon as there is information on this issue or any other issue directly impacting our members, you will be amongst the first to know. We will get that news out to you right away. But with that, let me sign off for this week. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to those members who took the time to reach out to myself and to Frank Valeri and the rest of our staff following last week's um, email news report with your questions. Really appreciate it. Um, we like hearing from members. So if any time you have a problem, you have a question, you have a complaint, reach out. We want to hear from you. But in the meantime, I hope you're enjoying the summer. Hope you enjoy this coming weekend. It's supposed to be beautiful again here in Massachusetts. And I hope it's going to be beautiful as well wherever you happen to be. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.